identify and implement identify and implement appropriate control to hazards and risk identify and implement appropriate controls to hazards and risks so uh, on this topic we're going to look at the methods through which you can control hazards the ways through which you can control hazards we already defined what a hazard is in there anything that can cause harm injury could be a behavior could be what also anything that can cause harm injury death destruction of property and so on and so forth so could be a behavior could be also what what else can it be a condition or a situation a situation so uh before we dive in this is the second topic we are going to look at hazard prevention and control the definition of hazard prevention and control hazard prevention and control so when we talk about hazard prevention and control what are we talking about uh hazard prevention and control these are efforts geared towards protecting workers from the workplace hazards i helping in helping avoid injuries illness incidents minimizing and eliminate safety risks which help us so we talk about hazard prevention and control we are preventing work related injuries injuries that are caused by what injuries caused by what conditions behaviors and situations those are the injuries that we are prevent preventing at what at work at work please remember under this topic we'll be looking at ways through which you can control those hazards uh for instance if the light is too expensive how do is too is too extreme how do you control it sasa so, so? if the, the if there is too much wind in the room or in the workplace how do you control it who is outside so mumbe ike kama kuna mtu i i saw and so forth The other item we are going to look at is PPE personal protective equipment personal protective equipment personal protective equipment PPE personal protective equipment and we talk about personal protective equipment well it is, it is one of the most important uh means to protect the wearer from hazards in the workplace it is the last frontier of the wearer from the work site hazards and should be selected based on the job scope and intended protection so when you talk about ppes personal protective equipment we are talking about those things that you wear to protect yourself those things that you una jihami those things that you protect yourself with for instance see when you're walking here barefooted you you are at the risk of being kudunga dungo na mtu mshumari na nene si ndio you are at the risk of harming your feet si ndio so what do you do to protect that you wear shoe shoe si ndio so when you walk naked what are, what risk are you at what risk are you putting yourself at this is si ndio see okay people no baridi you will start having flu si ndio so you have to protect yourself with cloth with cloth si ndio ah yeah what about when you wear gloves you could be fixing faulty electric wire si ndio so you decided to wear gloves in case there is a live wire that you come into contact with with ah yeah again when you are okay you guys are in a city right so in a city so what gadgets can you wear when you're working in an ICT lab or in an ICT environment or workplace to prevent yourself from harm what gadgets can you wear or what gadgets can you have hello what gadgets eh what gadgets sunglasses light or light glasses okay you 
can wear glasses in the, uh, that control light in case there's too much light coming from the room. But at the same time, in a C2 room, you can also minimize the light coming from the screens. Sendios, you can minimize the light? Yes, you can minimize the light. But you can also wear an overall when you are dusting the hardware components. See, you do dust the hardware components. Maybe you are blowing the computers, they are dusty. You can wear a, a, an overall. Also, you can wear a face mask, right? Hello, so you can do that. Ah, yeah, you, you can also. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else you can wear? Anything else you can wear? The clipping tools that you use in the in the in the in the ICT lab, like when you are clipping the these electrical connecting tables, the fiber connecting tables, you need a clipping tool, Cindy. There's a, that gadget that you clip with so that you can add that uh, jack pin, which is you connect to the computer, right? If you are bare hands, what will happen to your hands? They will be blistered, right? So you can wear what? Some gloves. Some gloves. Uh, what else can you wear? Anything else you can wear in a nice city lab? A loud music being blasted. Or maybe you don't want to, uh, people to hear whatever you are praying. You can wear what? Items to protect your ears. You can also... Uh, and so and so forth. So there are so many items you can wear in form of PPEs in the ICT lab. We'll be looking at them later on. Sasa. Uh, allow me we start looking at the preventive methods. Methods. Those that one can use to control hazards and risks. You, you will realize that these methods are not so new to you. They are not so new. They are not so fresh. These are items you have been looking at. These are items you have been mingling with from your, in your day-to-day -day activities. So the first item you are going to look at is called PPE. Use of And just like we have defined the PPE, there's use of gadgets, personal protective gadgets, to protect yourself when you are at the work, at the workplace. So, to control hazards within ICT or within the workplace, especially in your area, in your line of work, you can use PPE. And we have said the PPEs include gloves, masks, overalls, safety boots, and so and so, and so forth. So, those are the gadgets you are talking about, personal protective. So when you wear, you wear these ones, you are preventing yourself from injuries. You are keeping yourself safe from harm. From harm. The other item, the other method that you can use is use of elimination. Elimination. I know some of you are fans of wrestling. Senior, anybody who is a fan of wrestling? You are a fan. You have all heard of the elimination chamber or like elimination match. What happens in elimination match? Yes? Adumekado na mukanda. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So if you are in the roof, they are your ring. If you are thrown off the off the roof, Sindio, then you have been eliminated. And you cannot come back. But what about when you are thrown under the rope, through under, outside through under the ropes? You can always come back. Actually, some even opt to get out. They slide outside under the ropes. They stay outside. They wait for the match. Or begin, or begin. Then final minutes, Kanarud. But once you have been eliminated, you cannot go back. That's the rule. So the same thing can happen when you are controlling hazards and risks. And risks. If you realize a certain machine is faulty, as that a machine is the one causing noises, is the one that is hazardous in your workplace, in your lab, in your computer lab, you realize that this printer is the one making no noise. You can eliminate, eliminate it from the workplace. That means you can remove it from the workplace permanent and complete, completely. You do away with that item that is hazard, hazardous. That was what we're calling eliminate, elimination. The other one is substitution. I also, I know you know this one very much. This one it happened last week. Substitution. 
See this one we finally last week. Substitution. Only substitution to matter. Last week Valentine. Only uliona huyu haifiki bay. Ukaeka kando ukachukua ingine ukaeka hapo. So this one happens all the time. So when she realizes a haufiki bay ama hautoshi mboka na ni siku ya kununua maua uh, simu yake inaenda mteja. Uh, you have been substituted. It means you have been replaced. Uh, you have removed one and placed another. So you can realize that one item is not working. Maybe in your workplace. One machine is not is faulty. One machine is hazardous. Or something that is hazardous at your workplace. Maybe a, a printer, a computer, a desktop, a hard disk. It's hazardous. It's not functioning. It's supposed to fun function. So, instead of waiting for it to corrupt the other one, what do you do with it? You take that defective or that machine, or that item that is defective or that person who is defective with a bad behavior, throw it outside, replace it with a better, with a better one. Venye ili kufanyikia Valentine, sindio? Niwewe, ulipewa mauwa Valentine? Usijali, kuna mtu ulipewa mauwa? Ehe. Na mwenye nge kuletea, aliku substitute. <laughs> Aliangalia kuna kwenye kuna sikuku. Pana. It happens. Uh, in football matches, let's say you have a player mwenye kona hasira. A player mwenye kona hasira for no reason. Uh, ni player upe mwenye kona hasira for no reason. Eh? Eh, 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 but this guy called Ibrahimovic something. That guy alikuwa na hasira kila wakati. Huo jamaa umbuze kidogo wewe kuisha. So as the coach, what are you supposed to do? Ukilia lazima mtu amemkanyaga. Remember akipatiwa red mtacheza 11, si ndio? Ah mtacheza 10, si ndio? You have realized hii ni red card inakuja ku happen. This is a hazard that waiting to happen because when you are 11 that is a you you, you, you are in a hazard yes to it situation. You are lesser than you are supposed to be. And you have realized that it is one of the players who is going to get a hazard because you know he, he is a vengeful. See, he is a vengeful. 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 He is a So forth. So, if you realize a situation of, of, of such nature, you swap. You swap. You substitute. You remove one and then replace it with another. If you realize a hazardous situation in your workplace, you can swap it. Even if it's an employee who is a hazard, who has a hazardous behavior. Employee when you are not going to class up, I'm a student. Una replace here, una let them cost mwingi. Mwingi ne. To maintain the cost of labor in your class. Eh. Yeah. Acha kutoka toka akiwa mekaa mbele ya class akikaa kato So uh The other one is isolate the hazard from the people isolate the hazard from the people all isolation You can I isolate the hazard from the people. So you have realized there is a certain hazard at workplace. There is a certain hazard at work? At workplace. Maybe there is a dust bin. Amboyo in anuka that, that is giving a bad odd stench in our workplace. Isn't it? So do you, keep, do you still continue having that dust bin in that area? In that workplace? So you can eliminate it. You take it out, sir? Outside, you remove that dust, you remove whatever that is wrong in that area, whatever that is destroying that area, whatever that is giving that element of bad, evil, or damages in the area, you remove it and you take it eh? elsewhere. Uh, we have another one, we have two more remaining called one is called engineering. Uh, we have engineering. We have engineering control. Control. This is number 
five. And then number six, we have administration control. So when you talk about engineering control, engineering way of controlling hazards, we are talking about the engineering design, the engineering application of the of the aspects. Let's assume this is your workplace. This room is your one. Your place. You realize this room is an engineering design. See, this is an architectural design. See, so the room is an architectural design, which is engineering. So you realize the way the room has been engineered or designed, it has some loopholes. Maybe the room does not have enough ventilation. But remember, it is an engineering design. So the design is the one that is for. Faulty. Maybe the room does not have balanced lighting. Maybe the room does not have enough sockets. That is an engineering design. design because that room was made that way. So what do you do to control that engineering default or defect? Which is hazardous. Maybe you want to plug computers all around the room, but you have realized your room cannot accommodate it. If you bring computers, it will be hazardous. They will not be able to operate from one socket. Point. So what do you do? You change the engine, the design. You improve the design. You change the design to suit your applica application. You change it to your suiting. If there is no enough ventilation, you ensure you have pl placed enough ventilation within the room. The room. So now the last one, but not least, is administration control. Administration control. When we talk about administration control, we are talking about maybe the government, we are talking about the school heads, the departmental heads, we are talking about the governors, those people in administration, those people in the top, those are the, administra the administrators. When we talk about administration control, this is where the people in control, the people on the upstairs, the people on the upper level, comes up with the solutions to solve what? Hazards and risks. And risks. For instance, in this school, if we want to realize maybe Palakwa Field, there is a big ditch that students can fall into. See, that's a hazard. How do the school control it? The school administration can issue a stand warning, warning students again it's going to the to the field. Since there is a huh? there is a hazard that they have controlled that situation by giving a stern warning towards going to the, field, to the field. They can also give a policy where students are not supposed to go to the field without supervision. If the, the school realizes that this building is at the verge of collapsing, what can they do? They can prevent people, they can issue, they can come up with a guideline that prevents people from using or occupying the, the building to avoid the hazardous situation from escalating. That's all. So those are the methods or ways to control the hazards. One, we said use of PPE. We have talked about uh, elimination method where you eliminate something completely. Okay, on elimination, for instance, for instance, you have a, a potato full of sacks. Uh, sorry, a, a, a sack full of potatoes. And one of the potatoes is rotten. What, will, what happens to the whole sack when one potato is rotten? The whole sack smells a bad odor. It gives the feeling that all the potatoes are rotten. So what are you supposed to do to that one potato? You are supposed to remove, to remove it. And once you remove it, you have removed the hazardous pollution. So it cannot even rot the other pot potatoes. And then the potatoes now can be used, right? Right tree. That is elimination. Substitution, we have talked about how you can substitute, where you take the defective or the hazardous item off, and then you bring the one that is not hazard, or you take the one that is giving data or giving risks and accident. You take it outside and you bring another one. Uh, we have isolation. Isolation is where you pick the hazardous item. You put it aside. You isolate. For instance, if I realize that like the two of you, one of you is hazardous to the other, one of you is causing the other not to study, what do I do? I'll move the one who is disturbing there, the other to a different 